Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Bible Study. This is Bible Study episode 63. Today we're going to be diving into Acts chapter 14, verses 1 through 22. Today we have Brother Gio in the building to be able to discuss the word. We'll be talking about Peter and John before the council. To begin, we'll start off with a prayer by me. We'll be led by me today and read our Brother Gio, and then our, and our ending prayer will be done by Brother Gio. If you can, please bow your heads, close your eyes. Heavenly Father, we thank you, praise you, we worship you. We thank you for this day that you've made. I rejoice, me, God, and God. We pray that now is about to get into this time of digging deep into your word, God. We pray that you'll open our eyes, God, to be able to receive the information, God, to be able to point out different things, God. We pray the iron will be able to sharpen the iron, God. We pray that you give us a revelation to be able to understand your word, God, truly understand the meaning of your word, God, and be able to apply it onto our life and get a message out of your word, God. We pray that your hands will bless and cover the word today, God. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we're in Acts 4, right? So we see what happens in Acts 1, 2, and 3, right? The, the believers are gathered together. Uh, I believe there's about 120 people. The Holy Spirit is poured out, right? And now people are being filled. And so now you have Peter, who God said he's going to, who Jesus said he's going to build his uh, church upon. And we have, uh, who, who else do we have with Peter here? Um, Peter and John, right? So now we, we're, we're about to dive into the first time they're persecuted for proclaiming Jesus Christ as the Messiah, as the Lord and Savior. All right. Um, just prior to chapter four, chapter three, they're heading into, I believe it's like a 3 p.m. prayer service at church. And um, there's a lame man, man who can't walk. And every day, uh, I guess his friends or someone, they, they actually carry this man into, in front of what's known as the beautiful gate, or right? That's what they call it. I believe it's called the beautiful gate. They carry him there. And this man literally just begs and people, I'm assuming, giving him, gives him money, which is the reason why he's brought there every day. So Peter and John on their way into service, uh, they, they encounter this man and, you know, he does his normal thing. He begs and he's like, and Peter is like, Peter and John's like, yeah, silver and gold have I not. Oh, I don't have any money, but I'll give you what I do have. And in the name of Jesus, get up. So they grab him by his hand after they proclaim this blessing upon them. And as they're lifting him up, he slowly makes his way up and he jumps up. And now this dude is walking, he's super excited. And so now he joins the people into the prayer service. He goes inside and now these people are like, wait, isn't that dude that's always laying on the floor, can't walk, begging people for money? Like, how is he walking? And so now this miracle that has happened, it's, it's just like everybody's like senses are going like, oh my gosh, what just happened? Like, how is this even possible? This guy's been laying on the floor the whole time. And what's interesting is that the Bible didn't point out that there was some people who doubted that maybe like, like was he like playing games with us this whole time? Like, could this man walk this whole time? Like, I, I didn't see it. The Bible point that out. But instead, it was just like, yo, a miracle actually was performed before our eyes. Like, this man's really walking. And everybody saw it. And, and I think, I believe, rather, that when things happen in the Bible that, that is included in the Bible, when I say things like, like miracles, they are there to glorify God. They're like, I believe they're the strategically positioned in certain places so that certain people can see. Notice that this church that's happened, this church service is full of Jewish people. And so Jesus is presenting himself to them first. We didn't get to the part where he opens up his uh, invitation of salvation to everyone, meaning like the, uh, the Gentiles, the people who are not Jewish. 
And so he's performing all these miracles to get them to open up their eyes, to loosen up their heart because their heart is hardened, to allow their ears to be penetrated with the gospel. All these things are being strategically done so that their hearts can be softened, that they can receive Jesus as their savior. All right, so we had this miracle and then boom, immediately the, the higher elect, the upper echelon, the, the higher officials, the Sanhedrin, the Sadducees, right? They, they're like, yo, hold on, wait, wait, wait. We gotta maintain order because what they, their job was to use religion as a form of controlling the people, right? You can't do this, you can't do that. They were almost like enforcing, enforcing the law. And so when they see these new things happening, they're like, hold on, what's going on? Is this is causing like disruption amongst the people. Let's figure out, what, let's get to the bottom of this, let's figure out what's happening. And so now we have the first persecution to the disciples, right? Who will later be known as apostles, okay? Um, so let's get right into it. I just wanted to get some backstory to what was happening. All right, so uh, I'll go to the NLT version. So while Peter and John were speaking to the people, they were confronted by the priests, the captain of the temple guard, and some of the Sadducees. These leaders were very disturbed that Peter and John were teaching the people that through Jesus, there is a resurrection of the dead. They arrested them, and since it was already evening, put them in jail until morning. <clears throat> but many of the people who heard their message believed it. So the number of believers now totaled about 5,000 men, not counting women and children. As we now know about you, man, but when the word is sent in the church, that's what I pray every more, every Sunday when I go into the building, at least one person will be saved, at least one person. And now with this Corona thing, it's like people don't even come out. And it's just like, it, it's, it's almost like it's stifling where the word can go. But, you know, we have, thankfully, we have this, this, this virtual uh, platform where you can actually spread the word as far as you want. You can, the whole world, all four corners of the world can hear about the word, you know, so we definitely have to continue to stay at it and continue to spread the gospel. But here we have 5,000 people, right? Um, so the next day, the council of all the rulers and elders and teachers of religious law met in Jerusalem, all right? Uh, Annas, the high priest, was there, along with Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and other relatives of the high priest. They brought in the two disciples and demanded, by what power or in whose name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, which is very important, very important. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of our people, are we being questioned today because we've done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? Let me clearly state to all of you and to all the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, the man who crucified, the man you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. For Jesus is the one referred to in the scriptures where it says, the stone that you build is rejected has now become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. Do you understand anything that Peter is saying? The references that he's making, the fact that the Holy Spirit is is giving him these words to say, he's giving him the knowledge and the wisdom to respond. He's not responding out of pure emotion or flesh. This is the Holy Spirit giving him these words to declare, this is what happened, this is why it happened, and this is who is the reason, like for, what, for what's happening. Like, do you understand Peter's, Peter's response? Yes, um, the only thing that I'm having trouble with is in 11, Verses is 11 we said the stone that you builders rejected has now become the cornerstone okay so 
How do I uh the, the other price I get because it's like the same man that I was I was rejecting and the thing is I get that so I was trying to I was trying to like trying to compare how do that match with that I was trying to I, I got you. It was, I, got I wasn't you. getting it. Yeah. Um so it's it's a I want to say architectural term or like a, a, a construction term. So when you when you build something, right? Let's say you're building an arch, right? Like a, something like that, like a rounded arch. Right in the center of it is literally what keeps the arch from falling. It's the main stone or or piece or component that maintains that structure. Everything, all the load and the weight and everything is locked into that cornerstone. Hence the reason you guys rejected the cornerstone. You builders, right? And and I I believe he's referring to them as builders because uh, of of their position. They're the ones who who maintain and enforce the scriptures and 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 they put people in the jails for for blaspheming and 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 going against the scriptures, but. Jesus is referred to as the cornerstone. Now, what we could do is we could find where this was actually mentioned. So it says, for Jesus is the one referred to in the scriptures, where it says the stone that you build is rejected has now become the cornerstone. Do you remember when what we said, when they say scriptures, what they're referring to? Say again. When they refer to scriptures, when they say scriptures, when we're reading, do you remember what they're referring to? I don't think it was called the Bible at the time, so. No, it's not the Bible. What's, what's that name again? Which Testament are we reading in now? We're reading the in New the Testament. New Testament. Right. So they're referring so to the old. Were, Exactly, right? Because they're living this New Testament. It's not written yet. So the scriptures that they're talking about is what was given to Moses. So mm-hmm. someone wrote all those laws down and 10 commandments turned into over 600 plus laws. So you have those scriptures. It talks about everything that their forefathers did, right? Abraham, um, what you call Isaac and Jacob. So those are the scriptures that they're referring to. Um let me see here if it gives me a reference to the cornerstone where it comes from, so we can read that scripture. Yes, um, wait. You found it. Yeah, um, it's in Psalms one hundred eighteen, chapter twenty-two. It says, "The stone that the builders reject has now become the cornerstone." Okay. Psalm one hundred eighteen. Verses 22. So Christ is that stone, right? Isn't it that, what's that? It's a song that we sing to. Cornerstone. I can't remember. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> I'm no singer. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not the best person with you <laughs> to add it to that thing. But Be I'm but... May strong. All right, I'm gonna stop. I can't. But I, can't I, I, I get that connection. I, I, I right now that you explain it with the corner stone part, I definitely get that because with them being the builder, without the cornerstone, the foundation falls. The foundation is messed go. up, and their foundation is the completely same way because they didn't add in the corner to- stone into their foundation, their firm believing, their um way of life, their way of um. Law, law making yeah. um yeah that's how that's why they're corrupt because they forgot the most important thing the cornerstone <clears throat> to help build to help um not build up but help hold up the foundation right they 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 built up this guy god, god is the cornerstone of our life because he helps to build us up right yes sir yes sir well build us up and then hold us together yeah that there you go there you go. And you see, they they built this, this religion 
this law based off of, I, I think what God is trying to reveal to them that they just completely missed the point. The point is, I just want you to understand that I am your God. You are my people. I love you. I want to show you that I love you by providing for you, protecting you. Just serve me and worship me alone. Never mind the other gods. Keep yourself sanctified and separated. Don't find yourself entangled with those other people those, and what they're doing. I pulled you out of those other people. And I set you in a strategic place so that I can keep you in my fold and I can be your God. But you took what I gave you to Moses. You took what I gave to Moses and you created this whole entire other thing and you completely missed the point. What I was simply trying to tell you is to love each other, to love me. And, and if you truly carry out the definition of love towards me and towards one another, everything else will fall in line. That's, that's what God was trying to tell them from day one. Like even when he kicked Adam and Eve out of, out of, out of, uh, out of um, the Garden of Eden, that was love. He said, yo, let me get you out of here because now you're in this state where you're cursed because of your sin. You ate from the tree of the knowledge of good good and evil, let me get you out of here before you eat from the tree of uh, eternal life, I believe it was. I can't remember the name of it, but there was a tree that if you ate from it, you would live forever. So imagine living forever in a sinful state. Look look what's happening in the world we live in today. Like the, I, feel like, I feel like the only, and it sounds crazy, it sounds so crazy, but it's real. The only thing we have forward to looking for is that this is going to come to an end one day. Like it's not going to continuously just go on and go on and just continue to get worse. We have a great thing to look forward to. We have hope that Jesus is coming one day. We no longer have to deal with this persecution. We no longer have to deal with suffering, cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, people killing people because of the color of their skin. Like we don't have to deal with that no more. It's, it's just, that's what we're, our hope is built on. So while we're here, we live according to the word. We try our very best to share the word with other people. We try our very best to live the word with the power of the Holy Spirit so that when the time comes, we head up there with Jesus. All right. Uh, there was, I see here, there's one, one, one more reference before we get past the cornerstone. Um, my Bible is telling me, uh, Genesis 49 and 24. Let me see what that is, and then we can move forward. I just want to make sure you understand yeah. from what place Peter was responding from, the Holy Spirit. The cornerstone, it's meant, the cornerstone is also mentioned in Mark, Luke, Matthew, oh. and Peter. Yes, sir. All right. All right, 40... This, this is basically like songwriters. They they take piece of the, you know, like a songwriter, the person will sample piece and the next person will sample piece. It's, that's basically yeah. what they're doing. Um, they all sample that, 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 um, that line. Yeah, bro, listen, this is how, this is how the songs are, are inspired. Bro. Like, like when David was writing those songs, like it was inspired by all that he was going through. You know what I mean? He, he had a lot. He was being chased. He was a king. He was a servant. Like, he, he, he had a lot going on. So, this is exactly how these people, the new songwriters, they, they, they come up with these songs. They're inspired by the scriptures. Um, all right. So, that's the cornerstone thing. So I guess we can keep going, right? So, I want to just find what this thing is saying. I'm saying one more thing. First Peter 2 and 8. So it is a reference about Christ is the rock or the stone, right? It says that, I don't know if you remember, but Moses, God told Moses to strike the rock and from the rock, water would flow. Water is symbolic of life. 
we can't live, we can't go very long without drinking. We can go quite a while without eating, but we need water to live. And if Christ is the rock and water flows from the rock and we need water to live, you get the connection, right? All right, so from Christ or from the rock, we are we get to drink from him to have life. Also, the reference is saying, uh, like you said, like you said, the foundation is the rock, right? The chief cornerstone. Um, but that is a good spot to think about. I want you to think about your foundation, right? Throughout the day, meditate on the foundation. Who is your foundation? And because you're on that foundation, when storms and winds and waters may blow and crash upon you and you're going through things in life, stand still, stand firm in your foundation. Don't react out of emotion, but respond out of what you know and where you stand. You know the scripture, you stand on the rock. That's how you respond to your situations. You let your situations know that your God is bigger than your situations. But when I always tell people, when you're going through a lot, to me, I feel like God is telling you to stand still. Stop complaining. Stop moving. Sit down. I need to show you something. I need to teach you something. I need to grow. I'm pruning you. I'm, 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 uh, Wade talks about the, the husbandman and, and the vine. Like I'm clipping off those things so that you can grow larger. Sit still, figure out what's the lesson to be learned in the midst of the storm. Quiet yourself, stand on your foundation. Father in heaven, we are so grateful and thankful that you thought of us, that you opened up the gift of salvation, the gift of grace, mercy and favor to all who have breath, all who have life. We're grateful that we answered the call and we have great expectation and hope for what's to come in the future. And so now we take this time, this moment in this hour to say thank you. We stop for a moment to praise you, to honor you, to glorify you. We thank you for what you have done through the disciples and how it continues even until this day you started with 12, and now there's millions involved with this thing called faith in Jesus Christ, with this walk that involves grace. We thank you for the reminder that you are the chief cornerstone, the foundation, the rock where life flows from and into us. Cause us to be reminded of who you are when we're faced with trials and tribulations. Cause us to be reminded who you are when we're persecuted for your name's sake. May we never be afraid, but may we stand firmly and boldly in our faith in you and never hesitate to proclaim and profess our faith in the one and only true and wise God, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Now, as we depart from this Zoom call, this virtual call, I pray that we would never depart from your presence, but that you, O Lord, would go before us throughout the remainder of this day, protecting us, speaking to us, guiding us, O Lord, that we would fulfill all that you have destined for us to do today. Have your way in us, permeate our hearts, allow your word to be the meditation of our thoughts, and give us ears to hear all that you have to say. Guide our steps, order our footsteps, Father God, be a lamp and a light to wherever we go. May our hands be ready to serve you. We thank you. May you walk in the spirit even now. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. And amen. 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 Thank you guys so much for coming back to another episode of Bible Study. Hope you guys enjoyed that the message. Let Jesus be the cornerstone of your life and continue to um serve in and be with the Lord. This is it for the video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. If you haven't already, like the video, subscribe if you're new. Please turn on your post notification. That way, anytime I upload a video, YouTube will send your notification. This is motivation for young Christian. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. <laughs>